Welcome to Impact Makers Radio, helping you to find jargon-free information before choosing a professional to help solve your problems and live the life you love. And here's your host, Stuart Andrew Alexander. Hi and welcome to another Let's Talk Retirement Conversation. And on this segment of the show, ladies and gentlemen, I have financial advisor Gary Lewis McPherson II, who is the senior managing partner of McPherson Financial Partners LLC and is calling in all the way from Bethesda, Maryland. Now, Gary, who is considered to be a leader in the finance industry, will be talking to you today about a very interesting topic. See, Gary's taken the time out of his busy day to come and talk to us about it's not your parents' retirement. Now, that sounds like a really interesting topic, so I can't wait to bring him onto the show to find out more. So, if you are one of the many people in the Bethesda, Maryland area, and you feel that today's topic is something of interest to you, maybe you can relate to what Gary's going to be talking about today, then it may be a good idea just to take a break, down tools, log out of Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or anything else you happen to be doing. And yeah, you may even want to grab a notepad and pen and get ready to listen in and take some notes as we listen in to what Gary has to share with us today. So with that said, let's not keep him waiting a moment longer. Welcome to the show, Gary. Thank you very much. You are so welcome, my friend. I'm glad that you could take the time out of your busy day to come and speak with our listeners. So before we get started then, Gary, it goes without saying that anything you share with us today is not legal advice or legal assistance. It's purely for the purpose of sharing information. Now, would you just care to expand on that in your own words, please, Gary, so that everybody knows exactly what we're doing here today? So today what we're going to do is go over some of the key points that differentiates a retirement in today's society as opposed to what some of the things that people had in retirement in the past and some of the the things that you need to do to start to adapt to those changes so that you're on track and online and don't have market swings that totally change your retirement and keep you from it. Okay, fantastic. So with that said then, Gary, tell us a little bit about Macpherson Financial Partners LLC, the people who you serve and the kinds of situations that they find themselves in when they come to you for your help. Okay, Macpherson Financial Partners LLC is an independent financial service firm. We provide comprehensive financial planning and investment management for individuals. We typically find individuals that don't know if they've saved enough or if they're able to cover all the different expenses in retirement or how to manage their investment portfolio. We have long-term planning and retirement as our specialty, so we help people identify and achieve their financial retirement goals. So, Gary, when you think about the people who you just mentioned, uh, those people considering their options for retirement out there and taking today's topic in mind of it's not your parents' retirement, what are the advantages of, of that? I mean, we're speaking about your parents' retirement. What are the advantages for those listeners out there today? The main advantage is that if you're inspired by what we're talking about here, that you're going to start planning for the future earlier. And it reminds individuals that things are constantly evolving and that they need a plan to adapt to those changes. There are very few pensions left, so investment risk is a major concern. When we have investment swings of more than 100 points, people in the past didn't have that during the time they were preparing for retirement or especially not during their retirement. Inflation and taxes may be the same and play a similar role, but Social Security, while it does still exist, it's going to have a significant change on retirement for people now and going into the future with the fact that I don't believe that they're going to have as much benefit in their retirement income as people do even today or did in the past. So with people living longer, retirement savings is much more important. It has to last a lot longer with more things that are trying to take that income away. Okay, so what do you feel are some of the biggest myths out there when it comes to yeah, people's retirements, parents' retirements, as we're speaking about today? So I'd say the biggest uh, myths are that they should pay off their mortgage as soon as possible, that they need to have 
huge college funds to pay their, all of their children's uh, college expenses, and then they find time and start saving for retirement. With people living longer, somewhere between 30 to 40 years in retirement, you need more retirement savings than ever before. So starting late throws away the powers of compounding returns. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't save for your, your children's college and mm-hmm. that you shouldn't pay your mortgage if you have that you know, ability, but you do have to start your retirement savings, even if it's a small amount, it has to start as soon as it can so that you have time on your side to build your portfolio. Uh, Another myth is that Social Security will not be available at all. It's not politically likely that it will not exist, but it is likely that the payouts will be greatly diminished and that it's going to keep starting sooner for people later in life. So, Gary, there's lots of information out there, especially online when somebody is, you know, in research mode. They're wanting to um, see what's out there when they're considering their options for retirement. So with that said, what are one or two misconceptions? And I say one or two because I, I say that kind of tongue in cheek, Gary, because I know there are so many misconceptions out there. But what are two one or two common misconceptions around the finance industry itself? I'd say the one of the most common misconception would be that all advisors and planners and insurance representatives are all the same. What you have to understand is that the level of education and experience in the financial industry varies greatly. You should evaluate your advisor and confirm their education and experience, and you can do that because each advisor should really give you a document called an ADV, which will have all that information on there for you to review. Uh, Another misconception is that advisors working for major firms that are in the news often or you hear radio ads and different things, that they have better advisors than in smaller firms. And that may mean that the bigger firm has a bigger marketing budget than the Mm -hmm. smaller firm. It has nothing to do with the advisors they employ. Right. So, so Gary, we're talking about it's not your parents' retirement. That's the topic for today. Could you just explain to our listeners out there what you actually mean when you say it's not your parents' retirement? So, so many of our parents had the ability to have pensions to lean on, but they had income that was guaranteed coming in, and we don't have that anymore. It's changed to a society that we have 401k plans and different other vehicles that the employee has to save for themselves, so they have to manage the risk of their investments. And that money has to last for their lifetime. And they have to make sure they save enough to create that retirement income. So that's a huge difference than what it was for people in the past, where they had those employee employer plans that had pensions and they had income coming in. So there wasn't as much risk that they were worried about the investment markets. So with that said then, um, Gary, what are some of the, you know, when you think about your clients, what are some of their most common fears when it comes to retirement as it relates to their parents' retirement? One of the most common fears, especially with that, is that they don't have enough. Um, They don't know how much they really should save. And the conversation even more recently has changed to a conversation of how much income do you need as opposed to what's the total amount of your portfolio. And that shows to how much you're using in your retirement and even how much you're using now. That budgeting plays a major role in how you're considering how much you need to save. Another common fear is that they're never going to have enough and they're going to have to work forever. So if the most common fear is, you know, that I'm going to run out of money or I'm afraid of running out of money in during my retirement. And you no, know, rightly so that that is something to be, you know, it's understandable that one is fearful of that. If that's the case, then, um, Gary, how can they get past those fears? What, what should they do? Well, they need to identify their actual goal. And Mm -hmm. once you've identified your goal, then you can review what investments you have and what contributions you make. And that then can help you create a retirement roadmap and give you the next steps of what you need to take. And in terms of perceived obstacles, and I say perceived again with tongue in cheeks, but in terms of perceived obstacles that are out there, what what of those obstacles you see might be preventing people from seeking the help of a financial advisor like yourself? 
A perceived obstacle, I would say most common, is the cost of an investment manager or working with a financial advisor. Your financial advisor should be a fiduciary, and if they are, they are obligated to charge a reasonable fee, and they should be paid for their time. But there is a certain amount in a certain way that they should create a portfolio for you that is efficient and to make sure that the fees are as low as possible. Statistically, we've seen that investors working with an advisor have greater returns than investors managing their investments on their own, even when they have low-cost investments. So while an advisor can't guarantee returns, they should have a system in place that they can manage their client's investments based on the client's risk and their goal and their time horizon or the time period that they're going to wait until they reach that goal. So one of the things what we attempt to do here on Impact Makers Radio is to bridge the communication gap between consumers looking for jargon free information um, while they're out there. Um, looking for a professional to help them and the professionals that we invite onto the show. Now, you used a term called fiduciary. Could you then just briefly explain that in layman's terms so that everybody out there understands? Because I myself, I do believe there is a, a, a slight difference in the way how financial advisor is spelt with, with an E or an O on the end in terms of advisor. And I think there is a difference there that, that um, some people may not be aware of, but could make a, a huge difference while they're out there seeking um, professional help. Correct. And, and most advisors that use the OR in the uh, term advisor are fiduciaries where their services are fee-based and they're not commission-based. Mm -hmm. And what that does is, again, it puts in a certain obligation on them to do what's in the best interest of the client. So it puts you on the same side as the client. Again, you're trying to do the most that you can do for the client in as efficient as possible to keep fees down low and do what's in the client's best interest, avoid at all possible conflicts of interest. And that's what I mean by a fiduciary is that you're looking out for the best interest of that client and that's what your true focus is. As opposed to if you were if an advisor that wasn't fee-based um, and you weren't acting as a fiduciary, you just are trying to find products that are suitable for that client. You're not necessarily trying to make an overall plan that's in the client's best interest. You're finding products suitable to solve a problem. So Gary, please share an example of how you have helped someone to overcome those obstacles that you just spoke about and succeed in yeah, achieving their retirement goals. Okay, in, in my experience, I would say the most common obstacles are insurance products uh, that sometimes can be unsuitable. Mm. And I've come into different times where individuals were sold a product that was based on their fears, not based on their objectives and goals. Mm. And that's very important. Uh, when I review a client's financials, I'm looking to uncover any issues and then create a plan to reach that goal. When I come to a product that in the plan is not suitable and doesn't match the plan, then I go with the client to review why that product was given to them and when what purpose it serves. And if it still serves the correct purpose, then we'll de design the plan to work around that product. Otherwise, we'll look to replace that product as soon as we can. As a reminder, ladies and gentlemen, my guest today is Gary McPherson, financial advisor, and he's talking today about it's not your parents' retirement. Now, with that in mind, Gary, and for those people listening in right now, what are some of the little known pitfalls or even common mistakes that they need to keep in mind, no matter what kind of situation they find themselves in? Uh, a common pitfall is budgeting, which is key, especially when you're trying to figure out what type of retirement income you should have, because you can't accurately plan without knowing what your budget and what the expenses are for the future going forward. Uh, another big mistake is waiting to start your savings. So those are the type of things that I make sure to make people aware of. So how can these pitfalls be avoided then in the first place then, Gary? The, the main thing is to start in a budget and create something to understand where you're spending your money so that you can manage your money and make it work for you and make it as efficient as possible. 
you need to analyze your risk tolerance, which is basically how much risk you're willing to allow in your portfolio, so the ups and the downs of the portfolio, to make sure it's in line with what your comfort level is. And once we have that, then we look at that goal that you have, and we make sure all of that matches your goal. And these things are what we use to determine the appropriate savings and investments for you based on your goal. So, Gary, it's never a straight path to where one finds himself in life today. So with that in mind, what, what's your story then? What, what inspired you to become a financial advisor? Please uh, spend a few moments just talking a little bit about your backstory, please, Gary. Okay, so I worked for a managed futures investment company, and what that is is what's typically called a hedge fund. So it's some of the most volatile investments that you can have, and those investments were sold to high net worth individuals. So I got to learn some of the things that are in the portfolio in a very small portion, but can have a very major effect and got to see how those were sold. At the same time, I was finishing a business degree at Towson University, and I found classes on financial planning, which I completed all the financial planning classes. And when I did that, I realized the importance and how everyone could benefit from professional assistance with financial planning, that they can utilize their overall portfolio being reviewed to make sure they don't have too much of risky investments in their portfolio, that they know how to do budgeting and their insurance is in line with all their goals. And one of the things that was a key to me becoming a financial advisor was an aspect on long-term care insurance, where one of my clients, if they could have had the proper insurance initially, it would have greatly helped the retirement that they have now. Instead, they have a more restricted retirement because they weren't able to get the proper insurance and they didn't save enough. So there's costs that they have to take out of their retirement to make sure that they cover. And it's definitely a different retirement than what they dreamed of. And as I said, that that's a lot different than what people in the past would have faced because people are living longer. So even though they're living longer, they have different ailments that they would not have had previously. So things like long-term care, looking at that is much more important and plays a bigger role than it would have previously. So Gary, can you share a lesson that you learned earlier on that still impacts how you do business today? Sure. A lesson that I learned was when I worked with some individuals that made very high net worth incomes. So they made incomes of more than $500,000 a year. And even with that high income level, it doesn't mean that you're able to manage your money well. So with those individuals, many of them had pensions. They still didn't do the additional savings that I even ask of my normal clients now. And the problem with that is, is that life changes and prices keep inflating um, and different things happen. So you have to say, what happens if my spouse becomes disabled and they can't add to our savings for retirement income? And will our pension be enough in that case? So what we saw was that they couldn't reach their full retirement goal, even though they had pensions, because they didn't have the additional savings to add to it. And their pensions weren't enough for what they wanted for retirement income after tax. And that can easily be avoided just by making sure they kept saving and they saved early. So again, just emphasizing that now is something that's very important. So Gary, your title of financial advisor, you're a fiduciary, sounds, yeah, sounds very dry on paper, right? It's a title, it's a name, um, it obviously describes what you do and the qualifications that you have, but there is a person behind that, uh, behind that title. And fundamentally, you're in the, you're in the people business and in the transformation business because you help people go from point A when they come in to see you to point B to where they're happy with their retirement planning and everything else that you help in terms of their finances. So with that said then, Gary, when you think about all of the people who you've been able to help to create that transformation, how does that actually make you feel? What do you get from that then, uh, Gary? 
That benefit is tremendous to put people at ease and to confirm with them that they're doing the right things or mm-hmm. that we now have a system in place that they are going to be retired so that they take some of that anxiety off of their plate and know that I, I have a partner, which is why I named my company Financial Partners, mm-hmm. that we're a financial partner with them. We're on their side and we're working with them to be there with them to go through these challenges and make sure we put the things in place so that they're, they know it's working and they know it's there for them. And, and that's tremendous to me, it, it, you know, educating them and making sure that these things are set in place so that, again, just like I said previously, they don't have the restrictions going into retirement or, or ever have a time when things are really tough and it's not the retirement that they were trying to achieve. So what's the most important question people should be asking themselves as they consider their options for retirement? I think it starts with, am I doing enough and and what's my plan? Mm. And can it hurt to have a financial advisor analyze my overall retirement plan? And with that said then, um, Gary, and obviously before we close out with our last question today, what's the most important thing that people should consider when evaluating a financial advisor? I think it's, does my advisor have the experience and the knowledge to create a comprehensive financial plan for me? And you do that by, again, asking for their information and and making sure that you get their information to make sure you see what the experience they had, what jobs and that they've had to make sure it's been consistent, that Mm -hmm. they've had those levels of experience that have advanced them to give the different individuals all the information to make their plans and make sure that everything works. So it's been great speaking with you today, Gary. The time has just flown by so fast. If there is somebody out there who feels they want to know more about their retirement options, how can they find out more? What's the easiest way to get in contact with you, um, Gary? The easiest way is either by just give me a call or send me an email. And the number is 866 446 Three seven seven eight, so eight six six four four six three seven seven eight, or at email, it's Gary at McPhersonFP.com. Okay, just to let's say alleviate any kind of reservations anybody may have of picking up the phone or sending you an email then Gary could you just please briefly explain exactly what will happen when somebody decides to reach out with you reach out to you um, are they going to get hit over the head with a Fred Flintstone club and sold everything under the sun you know these are the questions that people have on a subconscious level when they're asked to you know give us a call so briefly just to explain the process what will happen exactly if they do and when they do reach out to you what our process is, is basically having a conversation. And again, we're, we're there to help you. So we're there to listen to what you have as a goal, what, what's going on, and to understand what you're doing now, and then what ways we can help you. So we just start the conversation to get some background information of what you're currently doing and what you're trying to achieve, to then start working with you to see if there's strategies we can offer to you. Um, and it, to me, it starts with understanding how much risk you're willing to take in your portfolios and in your investing and to make sure that you're contributing to things like a 401k or things like that for retirement. So to make sure that you're just doing the right things. So we just educate you on the things that you need to be doing. We verify what you're currently doing and then we decide if we want to move forward and we can help you more. Right. So no hard sales on the back end of the telephone call, right? No, definitely not. Exactly. So, Gary, we are out of time. So let me just remind everybody once again, we have been listening to financial advisor Gary Lewis McPherson II. Thank you so much for sharing so generously with us today, Gary. You have certainly demonstrated without a doubt that you are a true educator, advocate and trustworthy advisor for your client success. So thank you. Thank you very much, Stuart. Have a great day. 
You too, Gary, thank you as well, my friend. And I'd also like to take a moment to say a big thank you to you. Yes, to you, the listener out there in Bethesda, Maryland. Thank you for joining us on this very insightful and informative discussion with one of the leading financial advisor in Bethesda, Maryland today. Again, his name is Gary Lewis McPherson. Make sure you do check him out. Give him a call. He shared his phone number and his email address. Visit his website. I am absolutely sure that after speaking with Gary for a little while today, that whatever you do decide to do, you are going to be in a great place to get started. So that's it for today, folks. Again, my name is Stuart Andrew Alexander, and we'll be back shortly with some more leading finance professionals in this, our series of Let's Talk Retirement Conversations. So until then, take care, have a great day, And we'll talk real soon. Thank you for tuning in to Impact Makers Radio. To listen to all past, present and future industry thought leaders and trendsetters, visit us at impactmakersradio.com.